Hi, this is Tim Yoder with Fit Small Business. I've been a CPA for 25 years and today I'm going to teach you how to do petty cash accounting. So first let's define what exactly petty cash is. So petty cash can sometimes be used as the generic term for kind of a small amount of cash but in accounting petty cash has a very specific meaning and that is the petty cash fund which is an amount of cash held perhaps in a lockbox um, that can be used to reimburse uh, small expenses so perhaps expenses that are 500, under $500. Generally the way the petty cash fund works somebody presents a receipt to the custodian the custodian takes the receipt reimburses the exact amount sticks that receipt in the petty cash box and the key with the petty cash box you add up all of the cash plus all of the receipts that have been reimbursed and that should be the original amount of the petty cash right because every time you you uh, take cash out of the box you're putting in a receipt for that exact same amount so the petty cash fund always maintains that five hundred dollar balance uh, which is cash plus the receipts so let's get into the specifics the first step in establishing a petty cash fund is to establish the policies and the procedures so list the allowable expenses so what type of expenses do you want to be reimbursed from the petty cash fund so generally you only want expenses that don't need a high level of approval um, and obviously they should be below uh, a certain limit so these are kind of normal everyday things postage things like that where you don't want a manager having to sign off on it um, you need to, to specify who your petty cash custodian is going to be uh, this works much better if one person is in charge of making sure the petty cash fund is used correctly making sure that the total cash plus receipts always balances uh, with the amount of the fund um, if it's kind of a group of people doing it uh, it's a much riskier um, people won't be held accountable so have one petty cash custodian and then set the maximum fund and reimbursement so decide how much do you want sitting in the fund sitting in the box if you will and how much is the uh, a maximum uh, amount to reimburse a single expense second step we're going to transfer the cash to the lockbox so here the bookkeeper or the cashier or is going to write the custodian a check they'll cash that check put it into your lockbox that then becomes your petty cash fund the bookkeeper needs to record a journal entry um, to, to uh, establish the fund and that's going to be debiting petty cash fund which is an asset account and crediting the checking account so we're just moving three hundred dollars from the checking account into the petty cash fund the third step is you're going to reimburse receipts and record the expenses so as employees uh, bring you receipts that need reimbursed you will give them cash in the exact amount from the lo uh, lockbox and then you're going to record those expenses in this petty cash log that's also kept in the lockbox now the key to petty cash accounting and why it simplifies life is there is no entry into the accounting system at this time we establish a petty cash fund because we don't want to have to record uh, journal entries or entries or print checks um, every single time one of these little expenses uh, is paid and so all we do when we reimburse we reimburse expenses is take a copy of the receipt and log the receipt on this petty cash log step four is you're going to reconcile the petty cash regularly um, so reconciliation error is very simple it's what I've already talked about all you do is take the cash add in the receipts you have in there and that should equal the total fund so if it's if you originally put five hundred dollars into the petty cash fund cash plus receipts should equal five hundred dollars so regularly check <coughs> that that is the case and uh, step five complete the bottom portion of the petty cash log whenever you're ready for a reimbursement so once the petty cash fund gets below a certain amount you'll need to get that reimbursed and so to do that the custodian needs to fill out the bottom of the form and so you're going to have the beginning balance of five hundred dollars minus the petty cash expenses which is going to be the receipts you have in the box as well as what's logged on the sheet um, that should equal your ending balance and then you're going to ask for the replenishment so if you're going to keep it at the same amount in our example I think it was five hundred dollars you're going to ask for a replenishment equal to what the expenses were to get up to the original amount now once you complete the, once the custodian completes the bottom portion of this log and gives it to the bookkeeper then the bookkeeper is going to do a journal entry so this is when the expenses actually get put into the books and so it's not just a journal entry to petty cash expenses 
it should be a journal entry to properly record the expenses. If it was gas, it should be gas expense. If it was postage, it should be postage expense. And so the bookkeeper will summarize all of the expenses in the petty cash log and make a journal entry. The entry will be to debit the expenses, that increases those expenses, and credit the petty cash fund. So that's showing the funds coming out of petty cash. And the final sixth step is to replenish the cash in the box. So once the bookkeeper has recorded the petty cash expenses, they'll issue a reimbursement, um, and they'll record that reimbursement as a debit to petty cash fund credit to the checking account. So again, we're taking funds out of the checking account and placing them in the lockbox. Okay, so let's do a quick example uh, to make sure we're following. So uh, first of the year, the petty cash fund is set up with $500. Heather Smith is going to be our custodian. Um, they have four reimbursements. So they reimburse Deborah Wood $41 for fuel. They reimburse Richard Poe $49 for fuel. They reimburse Raffle Bolinski for postage stamps. And then Heather Smith, um, who is the custodian, purchased office supplies for $187 and then placed her receipt in the lockbox. So let's see how we handle the setting up of this petty cash fund and then also these four reimbursements. So the first step, establish the petty cash policy. So we've already named Heather Smith as the custodian. Um, we need to make sure that we have policies in place uh, that says the petty, petty cash fund is $500, maximum reimbursement is $100, any other specific rules that we want to apply to our petty cash fund, have that in a document. Um, when Heather receives that $500 of cash, she should sign the document taking custody of that cash. So again, this holds her accountable for the petty cash fund. Um, good. So she takes the $500, she cashes it, gets whatever cash she might need, probably not five $100 bills, right? You want to be able to make change for your employees, gets whatever cash she wants in the box, sticks it in the box. The bookkeeper is going to record the journal entry for that, and that is going to be to debit petty cash fund for $500. That creates an asset called petty cash fund and we're going to credit the checking account for 500 that reduces the checking account. Step three, she's going to reimburse these four expenses as they occurred and when she reimburses them she logs it on the petty cash log and then gets the receipt. Okay, she needs to reconcile the petty cash regularly. Again, all that means is she needs to count the cash in the lockbox, add to it the receipts in the lockbox, and that needs to equal $500. She's going to complete the bottom of that petty cash log. So our beginning balance was $500. She adds up the four expenses that have been reimbursed. That's $315. The ending balance in petty cash needs to be $185. So obviously that needs to match the amount of cash in the, in the box. And then she's going to request that the $315 uh, spent on these petty cash expenses will be reimbursed. So she gives that to the bookkeeper. The bookkeeper is then going to record a journal entry for all of those expenses. So the bookkeeper summarizes the journal, in, summarizes the expenses, and is going to debit each of those expenses for the appropriate amount. So these increase the expenses on the income statement, and the bookkeeper will credit the petty cash fund. So take that money out of the petty cash fund, reduce the petty cash fund on the balance sheet. So that records the actual reimbursement of expenses out of the petty cash fund. The second part of the journal entry then is to actually put cash back into the petty cash fund. So the bookkeeper or cashier will write a check for $315, give it to Heather, Heather will then cash it, put that cash into the lockbox. To record that entry, we're going to debit the petty cash fund, increases it on the balance sheet. We're going to credit the checking account that decreases it on the balance sheet. So that's how we record the reimbursement. And so that's how you generally do petty cash accounting with a somewhat manual system um, where you're making journal entries for the summarized amount. Last thing I want to show you is just quickly, let's see how you could do this in QuickBooks Online and it can be a little bit more efficient. So. Uh, let me pull up QuickBooks Online. So here I have QuickBooks Online opened. 
um, and we're at our dashboard. Uh, so I want to go into our, the first thing we need to do is we need to set up the petty cash fund, right? So let's go into accounting and let's go into our chart of accounts. And in our chart of accounts, you'll see we've already established a petty cash fund. So if you haven't already established one, you're going to want to come over here and click new and then add a new account or just click new and that'll bring up a screen to add a new account. We already have our petty cash account. So I'm going to go here and let's just edit it so we can see how we've set it up. So the account type we're going to use is bank. So it's not exactly a bank account, but it works very much like a bank account. We put cash in, we spend cash as we take it out. So we're going to account for it as a bank account and the detail type will be our cash on hand. I just named it the petty cash account and gave it an account number 1140. Okay, so that's setting up the account. Now, remember the first thing we need to do is we need to, to transfer the $500 from checking into the petty cash account, but we don't have to do that with a journal entry when we're using QuickBooks Online. So let's view our register. Okay, and here we can see the first entry in here is to increase our petty cash account with a deposit of $500 and all we have to do is show it coming out of the company checking account. So that's our journal entry but instead of having to actually make a journal entry we can simply uh, we can simply make it as an entry in our register. Then as we reimburse people or not as we reimburse people but once we get the petty cash log from the from the custodian we can go through and enter each of the expenses as being paid out of petty cash so again rather than having to do a journal entry we can simply record the expenses coming out of petty cash now the this is easier than uh, than doing a journal entry um, and we're still saving the time with petty cash because we're not going in and making these journal entries from the checking account every time we do this we're only doing this at the end of the month or whenever we decide we need to replenish the uh, petty cash fund. Okay, so here we've recorded the four expenses reimbursed out of the petty cash fund. Now we replenish the petty cash fund. And for that, all we're going to have to do is again, show a deposit into our petty cash register and show it coming out of the checking account. So we can do that again instead of making a journal entry. Okay, and so that's how you can simplify your petty cash accounting by using QuickBooks Online. So again, my name was Tim Yoder with Fit Small Business. I hope this was helpful. I will throw a link in the description below to QuickBooks Online if you'd like to give it a try. Uh, you can have a free 30-day uh, trial subscription or you can get 50% off uh, for your first three months. I hope this was helpful and I look forward to seeing you next time.